Hi, good evening, Ajin. Hi, guys. Hi, Dr. Azri. Hi, Hi, Hi. Hello, Hi. Hello, 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 so I'll try to uh, not get too excited or too fast in, in doing this, in case. Um, well, I think uh, I'll start off with by saying uh, I know all of you guys probably missed your Tetare Roti Chanai with your friends outside. I, I think uh, best of luck trying to uh, get a haircut and a shave, especially Gajendran. I don't know how you look like before this. Uh, <laughs> But one of the things I uh, I shared with my guys uh, about uh, the the positives that you can get from COVID is that uh, I told my CEO and CTO, I said, you know, here we are trying to get uh, digital disruption and digital adoption a lot faster amongst uh, other companies. I said, because you're doing a lousy job, you know, God had to go and send COVID to do your job. Uh, no. <laughs> Now, every businesses have to start adopting uh, digital uh, adoption to their business. Otherwise, they have to close down. They have to be irrelevant. I think that's the, uh, that's the start of all this. Uh, I think uh, for the young, uh, brilliant minds, uh, there's a lot of opportunity. Don't look at the negative side, right? Uh, if you look at the negative side, anybody who wants to get into tourism, I wouldn't get into tourism. Uh, that that means I wouldn't get into hoteling. I wouldn't get into um, airlines. Um, I wouldn't get into physical retail. Um, I wouldn't get into most of the traditional brick and mortar business. Um, but uh, there's a huge amount of op- opportunity in in healthcare, fulfillment, right. um, supply chain. I think there's there's going to be a lot more um, SOPs and uh, automation. Uh, so all production manufacturing plants will all have to be automated so that it will be future crisis proof. You know, if the next wave of, of uh, a new virus comes in and next time that uh, will be ready the next time. So I think there's a lot of technology that will start to, 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 to attend to that. Um, I think there will be a lot more businesses in, in education. There's a lot more homeschooling. There's a lot more online uh, degrees and masters and PhD courses that, can, that will be provided as a service. Um, uh, the businesses that I'm in, I love that I invested in creating a global uh, esports platform called ESPL uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, and that's grown very fast because of this COVID, because people are staying at home and they're playing esports. I love the fact that I invested in in healthcare business uh, close to two years ago. Uh, it's a brand called Offspring. Um, mm-hmm. It's available now in the US and Russia and European countries, as well as most of Asian countries. Uh, we find that because of this COVID, there's a spike in sales. Um, because now moms stock up in case um, we run out of diapers, hand sanitizers, and baby wipes. Um, our fintech business is also growing because now people are doing most of the stuff at home. Um, but I find some of the more um, hybrid digital physical business like uh, Internet of Things uh, slows down a little bit because although it's digital in nature, you still have to go and get um, um, physical deployment, right? Our green technology business, although it's digital in nature, there's still some deployments and physical interfacing that you need to do. So some of these businesses uh, will slow down. Uh, but we're glad that we're not as bad hit as most of uh, the traditional businesses. Uh, and uh, if you look at our share price where everybody else is going down, we're okay. We're <laughs> one way up. Um, I think because of this COVID, uh, a lot more confidence and trust will also be um, given to technology. So That's right. those, bright, those bright minds out there, 
uh, you can't go wrong when you you know you start to dwell into uh, technology, science, um, and some magic. So, us. now I like to hear from the young. So, you know, let, let's open this up for a lot more casual interact, interaction. Ask me questions and I'll, I'll find my uh, utmost to try and answer all of them. Where do you start? Of course. Um, so, we have a lot of um, questions um, for you. Probably we can start with um, the first one. Ines, are you here? So, he said... Um, can you share us the pathway you followed from a teenager until becoming the founder of Sedania so that we can know your challenges and hurdles? Okay. Um, I wasn't, a, a, I wasn't a, a that bright a student. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was an okay student. I was an okay student, right? I did go to body school, though. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I think one of the privileges I have that my children don't have is um, the fact that my parents allowed me to explore. My parents um, allowed me to to self-sustain. Meaning, right. uh, I'm not one of those uh, silver spoon kids where, you know, I have too much money. I, I, I always have to go and find my own money, you know. Yep. And I think somehow that helped to nurture my the entrepreneurial part of my character. Um, when I was in boarding school, when I was 15 years old, I, uh, I was I was already taking pictures using that old uh, you know, the old yep. film. Go <laughs> to Chi, come back, make sure that in one picture I got 10 people because the cost of 35 cents, I can get a 60 cents per, you know, 10 customers, I get six ringgit per picture, you know. Then, mm -hmm. even when I was, I was studying in UK, I set up, a, I knew there was a lot of Malaysian students. This is this is years ago, okay, now now you've got Malaysian restaurants, but back then in UK, you didn't have Malaysian restaurants. So, I set up a space where we uh, provided tetare, roti chanai, <laughs> I get 20, 30 pounds a day. Um, so, the point is, just throughout my journey, I've always had to go and find ways and how to make money. And mm -hmm. uh, even though I got my degree, came back, became a professional, worked with others, somewhat inside, I just realized that um, I, I may be a good employee, but I'll never be a great employee. I, I just realized okay. in that journey in my life that, um, that I think I'm, I'm destined to be something bigger. So... When uh, uh, when I left, I I decided already do when during my employment that I was gonna set up businesses. So <laughs> I you know so I I was privileged enough during my journey that I've always had good leaders to work for. Mm -hmm. um, somebody like I, I you guys may not know this. Somebody like Yvonne Chia, who is now chairman of Stanchart, was my boss. Um, uh, Ralph Marshall. Um, mm -hmm. Who is who was at Utusa uh, Tegas and Maxis and Astro was my boss, you know. So I think having had to work for just you know strong leaders, strong characters, you tend to to, to learn a lot quicker. So when I left and set my businesses, um, it was relatively uh, an easy transition because mm -hmm. I think, um, the drive was there, the 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 the, the, the click was there, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was the journey. And uh, I've always felt that it's never the money. It's always about how before I die, I, I make a change enough um, so that after I die, there are, there are services that I've created or product that I've created that continues to be used and utilized and it helps to change the way people live. Um, and I'm, I, I guess I'm lucky enough. Uh, at the same time, I make money. I've listed the, I've listed the company. I've exited a few times. Wrote a few books, wrote a few articles. <laughs> have the privilege of talking to young minds like uh, like the, the people in this room. So so far, it's been a great journey, and I, I wish that for everybody if I can. Right, right. So um, the, the the key takeaway was um, you were always on the lookout to to gain knowledge, and also um, you always had innovation in your mind. You had to do something innovate so that people it will be useful for the world and 
in your absence, people will, people will still benefit from that innovation. So I think that mindset brought you where you are now, right? It's kind of cool, right? To do good stuff, great stuff, and then make. Oh, it's it feels awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think it's cool. Satisfying, actually. I've got a great job. Thank God. Right. Okay. So thank you, uh, Dato. So the next question. Um, okay. Uh, okay. My question is: What kind of uh, IoT platform do your company use for your products and services? You're talking about the back end. Ah yes. Well, you know, there's a few from Sigfox or LoRaWAN or MPIoT and all that, right? So um, I think eventually that infrastructure play uh, will be built by many players, but just like many other industries, at a point where it will get closer to maturity, there will either be some mergers or some collaborations at the end of it because all are actually after that same application that will benefit human. So, um, but at the moment right now, I think um, <clears throat> Sigfox will probably have a slight advantage over guys like uh, Laura One. I think. Uh, but don't quote me on it, man. You know, I'm partners with, with all of them. So, far, you know. Is that the question, Puga? Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ajin. Okay, that, that was a rather technical question. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> right. Okay. So, uh, next... Uh, Next ninja in line, we've got Anis. So Anis, can I have your question, please? Hi, Dr. Azim. Hi. I'm Anis. Hi. Uh, so my question, I actually have two questions, but I choose one only. Okay. So regarding to one of your projects in IoT, uh, I think it's SAKP is about the fire alarming system. Uh, I go through your IoT project uh, in the website and I found out that one is the benefit is you can detect false alarm. Like I've been trying myself to create a fire alarm system that can detect false alarm, but I didn't manage it. So may I know like, how do you do that? Like I've been trying for years to get <laughs> to, get to know like how to detect false alarm. So how do that you do it? That is Mr. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a generic story, Anis, like you said. So, you know, I, I can't tell you the whole, uh, uh, how it works, but you can private message me and I'll, I'll see how I can do to help you, right? Uh, let me start off first with the, uh, with the drive, though. Uh, I'll tell you where it comes from. Um, some years back, there was this Ruma Tafis in Kramat, who was burnt down, which was burnt down, and I think like 21 or 22 lives were lost because... It was a prank of sorts between one and another. By the end of it, uh, the the bomber came too late, and uh, we lost the kids' lives. Right, and uh, I actually cried when I when I saw that. And I felt, I mean, in the current age, it's just quite unacceptable, you know. So what we did was we got um, we got a platform where uh, it's now a requirement for all building owners to install, uh, and that platform. Uh, breeds both analog and digital signals and automatically alerts the closest uh, fire engine uh, in the vicinity. Uh, it goes through my system where we also verify and validate if there were any uh, false alarm, prank calls, uh, and all of that, so that we filter all that and so that we put through the a valid request for a fire engine to then come to the look to the closest one and for them to come over uh, and then it has evolved to many many other versions uh, since then which includes you know fire alarm it um, it's wireless it's smart it's uh, food tracking traffic tracking data analytics of consumers at the site um, you can find it all on the website uh, but on the technicality of it you can you can private message me so that you don't bore everybody else okay Anis? <laughs> um. That was really a nice sharing that too. Um, I mean, sorry that happened with the toughest case. Um, yeah, sure. But, but uh, that, these are the kind of uh, events that would drive us further uh, towards innovation so that we can improve people's lives. Right? Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much, Dr. for that. 
Uh, next, we've got uh, Tines. Uh, so he's already online. So Tines, ask your question. Good afternoon, Dato. Hi. Okay, got Dato. Uh, I actually went through Google and your Instagram page to know more about you. After going through the innovations of Sedania, uh, I seen uh, ASAP as soon as possible seems to be a problem solver in many similar situations. Do you think your innovation ASAP could help our front frontliners, such as police, to monitor people outside their house and doctors, nurses to monitor the patients in the hospital? Okay, so uh, number one, I actually don't like the word frontliners. Frontliners means you have a second, third line of defense as well. Actually, if you go, to, if you get to the hospital, they are actually our last line of defense, not the first line. So, uh, you know, I, I, I have a lot of respect for doctors and nurses and the administration guys at the hospital and ambulance drivers and all that. I think they, they're doing such a great job. It's tiring. I think we need to do everything to help them, right? But I think we also need to accord them the proper respect and call them that they are our last line of defense, right? First line of defense is actually the policymakers, our prime minister, ministers, yeah. and ourselves. Stay home with the first line of defense, right? So that's the first. Second, yes, you're right. We So what we've done is we actually have a COVID-19 platform that we, we are currently proposing to Malaysian government uh, as well as the Brunei government. Um, I think the platform that we have is super more, more super powerful than what they're doing uh, right now. I heard they're launching my suggested app, which doesn't work and all that stuff. Uh, I don't know how you're going to get people to download the app when it's so difficult to get people to just stay home. You can't force everyone to download an app. So what we've done is we built a platform that if, um, if I put you down as patient A, my platform the platform can retrospectively identify who patient C is in the last 14 days that you have probably met and who patient B is retrospectively for the past 14 days or who, or who you have probably bumped into or rubbed shoulders in or been in the same vicinity with. Uh, and that platform allows us to also message them to say, you better come in to get tested, otherwise we'll go and pick you up. Uh, and, and the reason why we built that was because in my mind, uh, MCO doesn't solve the COVID-19 problem. In order to solve the COVID-19 problem, you have to zero rise COVID-19 patients and potential patients from public population. If you have even one COVID-19 patient in circulation, one becomes two, becomes four, eight, 16, 32, 64, one, two, eight, two, five, six, 512, 1024, and so on, right? So you can't have even one. So in order to do that, we have to first identify who these guys are, quickly take them off public circulation, put them in quarantine, give them a chance to recover, while, uh, and then test, 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 while you go out, when there is zero rise, sanitize. Then we'll be free. Otherwise, we're never going to be free. So I, I, I missed the PM's announcement. <laughs> Did they extend? Uh, I'm not sure myself because we are all here. I have a good feeling today. Yes, 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 yeah, I think it will be extended until after a year. <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way, Dato, Sumitra is here also with us. Hi, Sumi. Hi, Dato. You, you, you invite me and you know I'm going to be very transparent and very... Open. Good. <laughs> That's what we need. I don't... We need. I don't around the bush so you know so. yeah that's a good point hey Dato you know the platform you mentioned just now on uh, tracing your MCO2 later can you just send me the link if it's public already no it's not uh, it's, I can send you the proposal um, oh. um, you can float it up I've sent it to KJ I've sent it to ministers oh, and not okay as long as you send it to him fine then okay uh, but uh, I think they, they went with the internally developed uh, my Sejahtera. I, I see. Okay. okay. Sorry, I don't want to take up the kids' time. <laughs> no worries. Hey, stay safe, Sumi. I'm here. I'm watching. <laughs> I, I'm, a, stay. I'm a fly on the wall. Okay, <laughs> okay thank you uh, for that response, Dato. Okay, next we've got a question from Nasrul. Sayangnya Nasrul's mic uh, rosa. 
So I will ask the question on behalf of Nasrul. I thought this question is rather fun. Okay. So if you need to choose one of the infinity gem, mind, power, reality, soul, space, or time gems, like in the Avengers, what gem would you choose? Why? Stone. The infinity stone. Yeah, the infinity stones. Remind me again, I forget. I forgot. It's a, what, what's the stone again? Mind, power, reality, soul, space, and time. So which of these gems will you choose? Oh, wow. That's, a, that's interesting. Never thought about that. Well, I suppose of the cuff, I would think the most powerful is probably time. Time. Okay. Um, there are two reasons. Number one, if you catch, if you caught my last article in the Edge, I <laughs> go and find my last article. Um, uh, I, I, the title was something along the lines of "No amount of money can buy a second of time." I, I wrote about that, and uh, I actually quoted uh, Howard Stark talking to uh, to Tony about it in the in the scene. And, and if you look at Avengers, uh, so that means the such is the pricelessness of a commodity as time, uh, it's irreplaceable, right? As we speak now, I've just lost 30 seconds trying to answer this question. I can't get it back. Uh, and uh, I think in the, the way we're doing stuff, uh, I suppose if you want to, you know, Silicon Valley teaches us fail fast, right? <laughs> I think it's a powerful proposition if I can fail fast, very, very fast, at the same time come back with uh, my time stone and, and fix it and then move forward again, you know, I'll, I'll be I'll be creating tons of stuff with, with speed. <laughs> so, probably this, that's my stone. Yep, done. That's it. Time, time, stone. time stone. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Neto. Okay. All right. So, next question um, we have from Adam. Adam, are you there? Hello. Hi. Hi, uh, Nathan Azin. Um, so recently, I've read a website before about Steve Hawking's, and the website actually mentioned a theory about artificial intelligence taking over humanity and ending the world. So I wanted to know what is your opinion towards his theory? Artificial intelligence taking over from human. Yeah. You want the positive or the negative? Negative. Maybe. <laughs> well, uh, I suppose to a certain extent it's inevitable that with artificial intelligence, the negative aspect will be everything that is repetitive, everything that will be boring and everything that will be dangerous, um, we would be able to use artificial intelligence to automate them, either via machines, robots, uh, or just you know humanless uh, uh, um, contribution, right? In that in that sense, that means there will be people who will be losing their jobs. That's the negative aspect of it. But if you look at it from a positive perspective, uh, what it does is it pushes human to elevate their skill set and their capacity to a higher level. So while you while you give away all of the the boring stuff, the repetitive stuff so that that can be automated, so you take away human error, um, the human will have to be pushed to focus on the stuff that, it, that requires a lot higher thinking. There will be a lot more variables in that. Um, there is, although eventually you can also automate it, uh, but I think stuff that requires a lot more human, like creativity, conscience, morality, those are kind of stuff that is... Uh, too huge a variable that you can uh, it's relatively much tougher to to automate and much tougher to incorporate into your artificial intelligence you know uh, ah, okay. so we'll get smarter uh, as the ai gets smarter that's the point all right okay. thank you all right thank you thank you adam um next up we have irfan irfan are you there hello yes i'm here all right, shoot away, Irfan. All right, uh, hello, Dr. Uh, Dr. Azrin. It's nice, it's a, it's a pleasure to be talking to you today. Um, I've been looking into your um, micro hydropower system 
And I think it's really cool, um, the fact that it's renewable and all that. And that got me thinking, like, um, our country kind of primarily, like, runs on fossil fuels. So, like, what, what do you think are, like, the challenges that are going to be faced to, like, implement renewable technologies on, like, a big scale in our country? So good question, Irfan. I, I think uh, you present your generation, which is concerned about sustainability of Earth, right? So you're right. Fossil fuel-based energy is a depleting matter. Whatever, you know, if you keep on taking it away, eventually we'll run out. So good first point. Uh, but also, when you talk about renewable energy, at the moment right now, you know, pushing away mass biotech and all that, uh, if you were to... If you were to um, harness uh, natural energy, there's only three, right? There's wind, there's solar, and there's water, all right? But in our country, um, you know, wind, if you're in, in, in Holland, uh, it's op more optimized there. We don't have regular supply of wind, so wind is, is not the best option for us. Solar, um, it has its own problems from conversion, right up until uh, maintenance, cleaning up, bird droppings <laughs> on your solar panel. Uh, so that, that's not my choice. I don't quite like that. So I found hydro to be the most efficient. The reason being, if you go to Malaysia, Indochina, Indonesia, the backdrops of Borneo, Sabah, Sarawak, we actually have lots of rivers like the veins in our hands. Right? Um, uh, and if you go to those remote areas, uh, not only should we de be dependent on fossil fuel energy, but we actually do not have our our electricity grid to actually get to those remote areas. Um, my 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 explanation to that is I think unless it's uh, it's uh, forced by regulation, it's commercially not necessarily feasible to go and pull all of your generation and distribution to get to the remotest of areas. So if you go, if you have the privilege, I don't know where you're from, Ifan, if you had the privilege to go to some remote area in Sabah and Sarawak, you'll have a house, a small house. Uh, you go in, you'll find um, what do you call this, a freezer, microwave, oven, television, mostly given by their member of parliament or their <laughs> working right yet. Uh, but they use the freezer to store their clothes <laughs> and the microwave oven to store their underwear because there's no <laughs> electricity, you know. Uh, and I find that to be, well, it, it, it may sound funny to us, actually, if you live their life and you look at it from outside in, it's quite, quite um, embarrassing uh, as well as uh, sympathetic towards them, you know. Uh, we're in current age, we're, we're all talking about IR 4.0, you know, uninterrupted supply of power, but these guys don't know what it means. Some of these guys that has a bit more money, they, they invest in, in, in diesel powered generators. So why we bring micro hydropower? Because you can't afford to build billion dollar dams like Bakun Dam. Uh, but through micro hydro, I can install a small um, uninterrupted uh, to the ecosystem of the rivers at the back of their houses. And with one turbine, I can power up to 60 homes. And that's having the ability to change the lives of 60 families in that remote area. And that's the reason why we're doing this. Okay. I don't know whether that answers the question, Irfan. Uh, uh, all right. That, that's it. Thank you for your answer and all that. <laughs> Be loving that. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, Irfan. Um, next up, we've got Danish. Danish, are you there? Yeah, hello. Oh, hi, guys. Hi, Danish. Hey, can you hear me? Nice. Your question. Okay. Uh, so, uh, like right now, talking about sport, we don't have any sport right now, right? Because of the COVID 19 pandemic. So, uh, I want to ask if, what if we, uh, with the robotic staff and IoT, we can we 
possibly uh, create uh, uh, oh, can we make uh, the real steel movie oh. using the IoT to make uh, a new sport? <laughs> you want to do the real steel movie stuff? Yes. <laughs> you never Something know, like man. I think atom juice. Like, why can we make our own new sports rather than the esports? Okay. So, um, siapa tadi nama Harvis? Danish. Danish. Ah, Danish. So, um, guess how I see Hollywood? <laughs> Hollywood's uh, a, a superb uh, copcom department of the world. So, they actually, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. Okay, so so when they go and come out with a movie called uh, Real Steel, then uh, someone like Dennis feels, oh my God, we should have our own version. <laughs> we should build it. So the good news for you is I think that those uh, those days will come. I think uh, people will realize that having two people in a cage like in the UFC beat it out of each other for the amusement of human. Uh, is a is a it's a funny behavior for humans actually. We like to see uh, things fight. We like to see animals fight. We like to see human fight. Eventually, we like to see two robot fights. You know, uh, I think that may happen. Um, so, if you are thinking of building robots to to create that, uh, I'd say go ahead. People will probably pay to uh, to be amused. <laughs> um, having said that, though, uh, esports. Um, have probably started in terms of get, gaining proper traction in the last two, three years. It started with ESL in year 2003 uh, in LA. And uh, right now, it's just exponentially uh, just grown. And with this COVID, uh, we've seen uh, uh, another spike because people have to stay home. People have to be entertained. They'll have to find ways how to sell the news. There's no more football or, or badminton or anything to, to, to watch on telly anymore. So they'll be creating their own stuff to amuse, right? Uh, and to be fair, Danish, your generation can actually come up with tons of this kind of uh, amusements right at home. Uh, if you structure it properly, now it's all for free because social media, you know, the TikToks and the Instagrams allows you for free. But uh, somebody will come up with a mechanism to differentiate between the free stuff and the premium stuff and some people will pay for the premium stuff. Okay, that's good. So next we have a question from uh, um, Tines. Um, so Tines, are you online? Yes, I am. Okay, so shoot away your question. Okay, Dato. Tines again. I just wanted to ask you, if you are going to hire a person, what are the qualities you see in that person? Your answer will help me to join you in a few more years' time. <laughs> I tell you what I look for, okay? Because uh, you can only know a person once you spend enough time, right? So uh, it's it's so you only know whether that guy is good or not good enough on hindsight after the person has joined you. But uh, at an interview, I always tell my guys look for three things. Number one. Uh, you must look at that person's energy level. So energy level, guys, it always shows uh, through the person. You know, you know, when a guy wakes up early in the morning and he's very, there's clarity in his mind in terms of what are the things I need to do today. So these guys will always walk with a spring in their feet. They, they will always be very bouncy because they're like, they, they, they live their life purposeful. They know what they want to do today. They know what they're going to do tomorrow. Before they sleep at night, they'll, they, they check whether, oh, um, what have I done today? What am I going to do tomorrow? So energy uh, is energy is something that's difficult to buy. And energy is very infectious. When you hire someone who's, who has tons of energy, you will find that not only will he be someone who will be just you know running around, he will actually be infectious enough that his colleagues will have no choice but to be as energetic as he is. Yeah. So that's number one. The number two... You need to find people who are smart. I'm not talking about four pointers 
I'm not talking about PhD boys. No, no, no. I'm talking about guys who know that they have to find the solution. They're the solution provider. and They're not the problem provider. Uh, I keep on telling our guys, if you are not part of the solution, you must be part of the problem. So you can see when you talk to guys, when they find, a, when they find an issue, there are, there are a lot more people saying, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know that, you know. I've heard about that. I've seen that. Yeah, that guy is lousy, man. So they keep on compounding the problem. But the minority, the smart ones, will, will actually digest, process, understand, and think about how to solve that problem. Those are valuable people to have on your team. Whether they're working for me or eventually when you set up a company, you go and find smart people. And smart people, they're resourceful. They, they, they most of the time are a lot more street smart than they are academic smart, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you have someone who is high, so it comes to the third one. If you have someone who is very energetic, very, very smart, I can tell you right now, these kind of people would be a success. Whether they are with you or whether they are on their own, it's a success which is inevitable to me if they have these two. So if you want them to work with or for you, without the third one, it's not possible. The third one is called integrity. Why I say that? Because if the guy is very energetic, he's very smart, he will be a success. But for him to work for you, if he doesn't have integrity, one day he will steal from you. Because he's thinking, I'm the one working hard and building this and contributing this because I'm enriching another. Not fair. Or, you know, I, so he will steal. He will start you in the back and all this stuff, right? So find someone who has energy, very smart, and has integrity to boot. Someone who's integrity, who has integrity, I've, I've, I've been privileged to work with some of these great talents. When it comes to the point where they think uh, uh, their journey has ended, where they want to go and become an entrepreneur or they want to go and learn something else, and they come and see me. And I tell them, by all means, go with my blessing. Because I've always considered Sedania to be like a school. It's a great school. So um, our guys that comes and works for us or with us, and when they leave, I've had guys pinched by Diana Harta and Kazana. Initially, when I was a lot younger, I felt, oh, man, you know, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't uh, beat them in terms of package and salary. But now I go around saying, hey, if you know Kazana and Diana Harta pinch guys from us, that means we must be producing great guys, and that's okay. You know, uh, you can't expect to hire people and then expect them to retire and die in your company. That's not going to happen. So I think you just have to continuously get great talents, groom them, get them to make you know an impact in their journey as well as the company's journey. When the time is right for them to leave, go, let them go with their blessings. So that's why the guys with ethics, they will actually come and see me and tell me of their plan. And I, I, I'll, 100 out of 100 times, I'll tell them, you go with my blessings. It's the guys that don't have ethics are the ones that's going to have it, or integrity that's going to give you problems. Right. It's a great sharing of those. Um, so we have one last question. Um, Anis, are you online? Uh, yes, I'm online. Yeah, uh, can ask you get, me. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. All of us can. I keep on talking to the okay. same people. Uh, that too. Actually, there are a lot. There are a lot of digital ninjas here. Uh, most of them, they get, their connections is not that good. Um, so hence why we have some uh, repeated ninjas. No worries. Yeah. yeah, but the rest of them are also hearing you. Uh, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> all right. Okay. Go on. So next. my question is not about Sudanya. It's not about that. Uh, IT or anything is is about yourself. Like it will be a lie if uh, you as the founder, the the managing director, uh, will go through stress. Right, everyone is going to go through stress. Right, even I just took a, a stress test and it uh, tell me that I'm in a danger state. So may I know that when you are having stress, like what do you do? Do you have like a specific playlist of music that you usually hear, or you do something, or just anything that, what do you do to ease your stress? Uh, because this is from our previous session. So I would like to know, like, how a great person, like, ease their stress from doing so many works. Uh, so that's my question. 
Okay, number one. Right, that's all. I, I need to know this as well. That's all. <laughs> number one, don't call me great because I'm not great yet. Uh, but I do want to build great stuff. That's the. Uh, so it's not about me. It's about the services and the product that we're creating, right? So I think in terms of managing stress, uh, in terms of managing um, nervousness or anxiety or anxiousness, uh, there are certain principles in life that I, I, I believe in, right? Um, number one, um, I believe that, I, you know, I, I'm a firm believer of when I die, when I die, everything else dies with me, except for three things. The, the, the prayers of my filial kids, um, um, knowledge that is beneficial, and um, my assets that is continuous, right? So that's why I write books, because that's knowledge that's beneficial. That's why I, I make the time to, to talk to real minds like you guys, because I'm hoping to share some of the uh, you know, knowledge uh, that is beneficial. So because of that belief, uh, whenever I get tired or I get stressed out, I identify that it comes in the as a package in the journey, you know. Uh, because if you want to have the easy life, I would have retired 10 years ago, but I wouldn't have lived the principle of life that I believed in, that I mentioned just now. So I know in, in the pursuit of that, the package that comes with it are, you know, tiredness, you know, taking your time, stress, right? So that's that's on one. So I think because of that macro belief, I, I, I'm at peace with it. Having said that though, uh, I know amongst the young, especially, they they say, well, okay lah, you okay? Because, you know, you're successful, you're all that. So you can say easily lah. You know, I, I still have to build, I still have to build myself. You know, it's not as easy for me to apply what you're doing in your life. So let me share with you how I think uh, people may not fully understand what stress really means. Stress in my books, just like your nervousness and your anxiety is actually uh, it's actually a component that is required for you to do great stuff let me try and explain that in a, in a simpler manner um, do you think it's easy to be a billionaire no and therefore only no. a few can Right, and therefore only a few can. Yeah. There, so the lesson from that is, if you want to be a billionaire, you actually have to go very high level of hardship, very high level of challenges, and very high level of adversity that comes with it for you to become one. So great stuff comes with great cost. So in order to get to the level of success of whatever you are pursuing, nervousness, anxiety, stress is that very obstacle and challenge that you have to overcome with. So it's not a resultant of what you're going through. It's more of a, a component that is required to get to where you want to go. Now, if you understand that as a concept, then stress can be negative, it can equally be positive for you. It's, a, it's an energy source. So my nanya, if you say, oh, uh, and stress, lah, I don't know how to handle this. And what you're doing is you're attesting that as something which is a result of what you are doing. And therefore, you don't know how to handle it. Right? But if you say, I need to go from where I am, to where I want to go. For example, I want to be a billionaire or I want to finish that project or I want to get an A+. I want to get, uh, uh, I want to list that company, right? And I know from to where I am right now to where I want to go, there will be a lot of obstacles, adversity, challenges. There'll be a, a nine out of 10 people who say, I cannot do this. There'll be a lot of stress that comes with it. There'll be a lot of anxiety that comes with it. There'll be a lot of nervousness that comes with it. Now, if you see that those are energy source, then you know that it's an energy source that you can harness. So the point I'm trying to make is 
you should accord it as an energy source and not accord it as a weight to you. When you give it, when you, you call it a weight to you, it will weigh you down. <laughs> when you accord it that it is masa nak masak, as right. it is the 20 ingredients, it is an ingredient in that recipe. Right? If you don't have the ingredient, that, that masakan tak sedap lah. <laughs> so stress, anxiousness, nervousness, adversity, obstacle, challenges, uh, social media kata you jahat are all ingredients that mix up that whole recipe for you to get there. So if you accord it that, then you will have no problem in managing it at the time. I hope that helps. Okay, I thank you, Dato. I think that's a great sharing, Dato. Uh, so stress is not really a resultant um, cause of an event. Okay? So it's more of uh, what do you call this? Um, an energy source to achieve success. So it's it's a different way of looking at it, right? Because so, kalau you nak hidup senang, Yenindra. Uh, yeah. Dato just now, right? Yeah. So you're gonna be building. It's 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 hard, right? Yeah. And that's why only a handful can. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because the rest of the people, they don't want to go through the stress and the adversity and the challenge and all. They're not willing to. So, mm. live, a good, live an easy life lah. Semua nak senang eh? <laughs> but if you say, I want to, I'm telling you right now, mm. stress, anxiety, nervousness, adversity eh, is the ingredient. So, you accord it there. Right. You know, in, in, in Silicon Valley, um, <laughs> if you do a startup, so that you understand it in, in parallel, I want to explain. If you, if you do a startup and you get sued, okay, yep. if you have a company here and you get sued, you'll get stressed, betul? Yep. Because like somebody suing you, legal fees, go to court, oh, stress, you know? If you, if you do a startup in the US and your startup gets sued, people are happy. You know why? Why? Because they accord that suit as validation of their business. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so that's a lesson, right? Right. Parallel to what I was explaining. Ah, so that's that's really nice. I think it, it, it's it's very helpful um, for all of the ninjas, um, even me as a person too. So uh, that yes, I apologize. Yes, I did tell you uh, the last question would come from Anis, but we have just one last question. Finally, we we've got. Um, Shafi online, uh, well, he was online, it's just that now his connection is, is better and he would like to ask you a question. Okay, Shafi, shoot. Shafi, go. Okay, uh, hello. Uh, Dato, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I love okay. your cat. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, my my hair is like a bush, you know. Long time. <laughs> yeah, you so, don't want to ask me. You don't want to ask me, okay? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so, that's very inspiring. Thank you for the advice, Dato. Uh, I feel a bit uh, anxious after that, actually, because of all of that. But I just want to ask: Do you uh, do you receive uh, internship? If so, what is the field that you require, or do you recommend us to to take a part of it so we can have an internship at Sedania Innovation? That's a nice speech, man. <laughs> you want me to answer? You want me to answer? You first take off your hair. I just want to see how bushy your hair is. Actually, <laughs> here already. Oh my god. I need to. Yeah, that's all. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. I lost you the second half. What was it? Oh, okay. Uh, so, do you receive internship at your company? And if so, what, uh, what, uh, the most, the most required field that you would recommend us to take part of. Okay. So, so to... yes, we do. Okay. Yes, we do. Uh, we actually uh, support MDEC uh, uh, in most of the activities. Uh, you can yes. ask me okay. and uh, Azura and all that. Uh, I think the last uh, the last session, we did take a few uh, digital ninjas, uh, uh, internship and attachments uh, at our company. Uh, I suggest if you want, you know, go to our website, we have various, um, what do you call this, various uh, portfolios that you can take a look oh, at, so ranging from okay. tech to esports to health tech to um, sharing. And so find the area that suits you 
uh, write in if you want to get uh, ahead of the curve and you want to show how resourceful you are. Get MDEC to write you a recommendation letter. <laughs> oh, oh my God. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. The, yeah. Get the letter to be looked at uh, better, you know. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will go through that. All right. Thank you, Shafi. Thanks for the, thanks for the entertainment. Yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. It's okay.